What is up, everybody? It's Luke here. I'm uh, back with another video, and I wanted to kind of check in on the state of Linux gaming in, in regards to the updates that have been done to both Easy Anti Cheat and BattleEye for support in Proton and any Linux distro of your choosing. So, as of recently, I believe it was uh, Friday. Uh, it was on uh, Friday as of this video that uh, that Valve announced that there were five new games that support uh, <laughs> Battle Cheat now support under Proton, which it which includes Arma Three, uh, Arma Three Daisy, uh, Planet Side Two. Ark Survival Evolved, and then there's one other game that I do not remember the name of that falls under the category of being officially supported in BattleEye for Proton. So this, guys, is pretty big news considering that anti-cheat has been an issue in Linux since around 2018, and now the tides are starting to turn. So with this, these are five games that are relatively big, but not necessarily the biggest on the market, but are still fairly significant games to begin with that, you know, will send off a signal that, yes, it's that easy. All you have to do is email uh, BattleEye, the BattleEye team, and they will enable Proton support for your game. Now, as far as uh, BattleEye goes, it's I th as far as my thoughts on whether or not we're going to uh, see uh, more easy anti-cheat or more BattleEye anti-cheat games um, happening or being enabled for Linux support. If you want my honest opinion, I think that we're probably going to see more BattleEye anti-cheat games being supported with Proton as opposed to easy anti-cheat. Because from what I understand, as of right now, from some of the moderators that I talk to for certain uh, games, they I had asked them if they were planning on adding pro uh, Proton support for easy and easy anti cheats Proton support. I asked if they were planning on doing that, and their response was that the developers were planning to add support for Proton with their easy anti cheat game. It's just that Generator easy anti cheat stable. hasn't given them or Epic Games hasn't given them the mainline package to actually say yes we want to enable it to like you know check the checkbox as the Linux community has been coming out and saying that all the developers just need to do. Well guys as somebody who works with software I can say that it's not as simple as just enabling the uh, ability to use Proton. There's a little more work with easy anti-cheat that actually does need to be done, such as promising long-term support, and because of how finicky it is, developers just don't know what risks they're going to take with it. BattleEye, on the other hand, all you have to do is email them, they'll take care of it for, for you. So from the developer's perspective, BattleEye is seen as less of a liability, even if the liability that does exist for both is relatively the same. But because all you have to do is email BattleEye and they'll take care of the rest. I think that we're going to see some more BattleEye anti-cheat games supported on Linux through Proton as opposed to easy anti-cheat. However, uh, Dead by Daylight, which is a pretty significant uh, game for what I would call self-described masochists that just want to play the game because they hate it. I have a friend personally who I follow on YouTube that just plays the game so other people don't have to. But that is a game that's going to get supported through Easy Anti-Cheat, and there are a couple of others that have said that they're going to support their games uh, with Easy Anti-Cheat. So it's not like... So the progress is slow, but it's it's moving. It's getting along, and it, we're at a far better spot now in 2020, at the end of 2021 than we were in 2018 when it came to Linux Gaming. 
And a lot of people are saying that, well, it's the developers aren't enabling it, so therefore we should give up hope, they should have enabled it by now. Well guys, it's not that simple. A, the Steam Deck hasn't even come out yet, and because of the delay, there's been a lot of work done to kind of iron out some of the, the kinks and the intricacies that come with trying to enable anti-cheat support for a compatibility layer like Proton. So, really, the Linux community does need to stop being impatient because developers are actually taking note of the fact that people are wanting to take the platform seriously. And it's not like they don't want to support it. Any money, and this is how capitalism works, any money that can be made, they will make if it doesn't require too much extra effort. That's just how economies work. And Proton is now at the point where you hardly have to do anything to make a native Linux port. You simply just have to enable anti-cheat if it's there. Now, the other thing to mention about Easy Anti-Cheat is that Easy Anti-Cheat's uh, version that works with Proton and Linux is a version that is of the soft that is an SDK version, meaning that it's a software development kit version, meaning it's more on the bleeding edge side. The mainline version has not does not have that. So a reasonable explanation for why a lot of games or developers haven't enabled it is simply because they just haven't been given access to it. But that doesn't necessarily stop all the soy devs in the Linux community from getting up and getting their uh, getting in a bunch about it and simply <laughs> just blindly screaming and saying devs bad like this is a problem that i think has existed in the linux community for a while and part of the reason i think why uh developers haven't supported linux because the linux community whether we like to admit it or not is a fairly toxic community compared to the people that just run windows I'm not saying that Windows is a better operating system by any means, it's not. I'm just saying that the people that typically run Linux are going to be harder to get along with than the people that just run Windows. And I'm saying this as a, as a, as a Linux user myself. I'm saying it as a Linux user. I would far rather, I would much rather talk to somebody who just uses Windows than somebody who uses Linux. I'm probably going to have a better time just talking to somebody who doesn't really, you know, care about it, and there's no, like, elitist complex. <sighs> well, now that that is out of the way, I'm going to comment my thoughts, I'm going to give my thoughts on a few other things, such as the future of native Linux ports, the future of Windows and the Linux ecosystem, and whether or not the uh, Steam Deck will be a success, a failure, etc. So the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about was native Linux ports. So as I mentioned, and as everybody knows at this point, with Proton, developers hardly have to do anything to configure their games to run on Linux. Now with now with anti-cheat being supported, they don't even have to make native they don't even have to make native Linux games to run their anti-cheat. What people don't understand about Easy Anti-Cheat and BattleEye is that both have been both have actually supported Linux for quite some time. It's just not supported through Proton. It's only supported through native Linux games as opposed to running them through Proton. But now that that capability has even been added, there's some would say that there is even less of an incentive to make native Linux ports for their games. After all, we want people to just move towards using native Linux products as opposed to using native Windows products running through Wine. Now, my, my, my two cents on this, I don't think that this would be a solution that is going to be long term. Now, I, I cannot seem to find any combat anywhere. Um, okay, there's combat over there. So, I don't foresee... I. Well, I do foresee Proton and Wine being a project that still gets developed in the long term, whether it be in indefinitely or if something if it's something that's only going to continue for the next five years, or if they're going to keep doing it to just improve performance of older games. I do foresee Proton being a long-term development, and I do see development continue going into that. 
do I foresee developers just developing games for Windows and then using Proton as a crutch in the long term? My answer to that question is not going to be liked by a lot of people, but my answer is both, well, yes and no. I think an increasing amount of developers are going to see that a lot of people are adopting Linux as a platform. And there are going to be developers that will want to develop native Linux games There's for their uh, titles. There is going to be an increase in the amount of games that are developed for Linux exclusively, not exclusively, but there are going to be Linux versions of games for sure, and that number is going to increase. Are all developers necessarily going to do it? No. Are all native Linux ports going to run well when they come out? No. And that is something that Proton exists for, in my opinion, both as a uh, tool to run legacy software and as a means of running games that just can't seem to run very well, negatively speaking. It's there if you need it, but don't need it, kind of, but try not. It's there if you need it, but try not to need it is the philosophy I think that developers will go with when doing game development for Windows versus Linux. At least that's what I perceive. So yes, Proton is going to be a little bit of a crutch, but slowly over time, I think that more developers are going to make Linux ports until, as uh, the Mental Outlaw has said, that Richard Stallman is going to come down on his white horse and defeat the Antichrist Bill Gates, where we'll all play, where we'll all play open source Apex Legends on our rice out desktops forever and ever. Now, the Mental Outlaw in his example actually used uh, Fallout. I think he used Fallout in his example, but eh, the, the point still stands. I think more Linux games are going to be developed in the future, but I don't necessarily think that it's going to be, you know, a become a oh, situation where Linux replaces Windows. And do I foresee the possibility of games being, being exclusively developed for Linux? I gonna be honest there I don't really know uh, too much about whether or not that would actually happen uh, partially because part of the reason is because Windows is a simple operating system to use it's not a simple one to fix if you if it's broken good luck fixing it because you're not allowed to look into it Linux is broken, at least you can see it's going under the hood. The problem is whether or not you would know how to do it. The average user, though, uses Windows because it's relatively easy to use. It's it's simple, and I think for a while that's still going to be the target. But more games are going to be playable on Linux, and because of that increased market share, once, once more people switch over because they see that it's possible to run your favorite online games now with the anti-cheat support, Without all of the unnecessary bloatware, it's going to see an increase, and developers will take note of that. That is what I foresee. Now, an another topic that I wanted to kind of, another topic that I kind of wanted to go over is what my opinions are on running Proton versus native Linux games, and whether or not this will, whether or not this will be a good thing. Um, actually, no. Um, actually, yeah, I'll kind of go into that, and then. Whether or not whether or not I think it's a good idea, or whether or not I think they should just do all native. Um, personally, uh, okay, yeah. Here's here's where I was here's where I was going with that. Here's where I was going with that. Um, with when it comes to certain software, like say for example, I want to play Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, the 2017 game, and I want to run mods. I'm not entirely sure if they've gotten Frosty Mod Manager to work on. Uh, Linux through Wine yet, or if it's still in the works. But 
say I'm they're they're not going there is no way that EA Games is gonna go back and make a Linux version of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and there's no way that the developers of Frosty Mod Manager are going to develop a Linux version until the Frosty engine, until the Frostbite engine actually becomes available uh, for Linux. So, in the case of Star Wars Battlefront 2, we would have a situation, say for example, if I wanted to mod that game. Let's. Wine is particularly important for software that needs to interact. Windows software that needs to interact with other Windows software. So say I want to mod a Windows game. If, for example, the Frosty Mod Manager had a Linux version and was trying to mod a win- if it has a Linux version and it's trying to run and modify a Windows version of the game, I- it's still feasible that it could be done, it's just that there would be a lot of weird uh, workarounds that they would have to implement in it, that they would probably have to like implement a few- implement a few wine DLLs at that to actually get it to work when using legacy Windows software. So my opinion on this is what I foresee happening in the long run is that older depreciated software is going to be what Wine is for. As Windows has terrible backwards compatibility, I think that many people are going to look to Wine to run older games, especially games from like the Xbox and you know the early 2000s era. For example, Requiem of Engine Angel does not run on Windows, even though it's supposed to be back- even though Windows 10 is apparently supposed to be the most backwards compatible operating system out there, Wine has far better backwards compatible capabilities than Windows 10 does. And I think a lot of people are going to see that and use Proton for that, and then going forward, eventually more and more li native Linux games will be developed. I don't think that using Wine for older stuff is necessarily a bad thing. So if anything, I see Proton as a thing, as a tool that will be used to run Windows new, that will be used to run older Windows software as it becomes depreciated, and running newer Windows software when your Linux port isn't quite up to snuff. So that's about everything that I had for this video. I hope everybody enjoyed. I do apologize that I was gone for about a month. I've been dealing with a lot of personal life issues and it's been preventing me from making videos. But I should be back for the time being and more content like Let's Plays will be coming in the future. So. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and enjoyed a little bit of the commentary, and if you have any thoughts on the future of Linux gaming, let me know what you guys think in the comments below.